You got the <laughs> good vibrations. You got the sweet sensations. <laughs> I think I struggled as a kid with singing. I mean, I, I still struggle to this day with singing, let's be honest. Uh, but I think I tried to hit the tone of the... Uh, the artist or the singer and match their, I don't know if the word's tone, again, I don't know much about music, but uh, match their, like I was just <laughs> listening to the song by Marky Mark, uh, Good Vibrations. And there's a woman in it that sings, as we all know, that does a very high pitch, and Good Vibrations, something like that. And I'll try and make it sound like that and try and match her I don't know, again, what it's called, if it's tone or what have you, and try and sing like this woman is. And I don't have any ability to sing in this high-pitched tone that this woman does who's singing good vibrations. And I think, Pitch, I think if I let that go, the need to make it sound like the original song and just kind of sang it in my own voice, uh, I would have sang a lot better all my life. Because perhaps my voice isn't that bad. Perhaps the problem with my voice is that I'm trying to make it sound like something that it's not. And uh, that's probably not the right way to do it. And I may have talked about, <laughs> I'm not going to sing it in my voice now. Now I've put too much pressure on myself. I put too much pressure on myself. I probably talked about it before my time uh, when I went out for the sound of music in I think it was seventh grade, might have been eighth grade. We did a musical, Sound of Music, actually did a pretty good version. I'd love to see it now, uh, cause we had some good singers and uh, good uh, actors in our class. And we all lined up on stage and we were doing the doe, a deer, a female deer, Ray, uh, uh, whatever, of Golden Sun, me and Amy, I call myself far, a long, long way to run. And then this was my line. The person to my left said, Fa, a long, long way to run. And then I hit sew a needle pulling thread. And I struggled with it. I struggled with it. It didn't sound good. I tried to sing it in some sew a needle pulling thread. Something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what I tried. But it was something like that where I tried to sing it in a voice that wasn't mine. And had I had the confidence in myself and who I was to sing it in my own voice, uh... It might have come out a lot better. <clears throat> and now I find myself singing all the time and not really giving a damn what I sound like and singing it in my real voice. And maybe, maybe it comes out better. Maybe it doesn't, but either way, either way, I feel more confident and more comfortable. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. You played Max. Was Max the butler? Oh no, Max was the friend. Max was the friend, the kind of guy that used the Von Trapps to, uh, 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 not use them. He was, he was torn. He was torn. He was an uh, imperfect person, uh, but he was a good at heart, I feel, Max. And just thinking of the, yeah, Max, I don't think sings. Max doesn't sing. But neither do the extras that danced in the back. Neither do the extras. Good morning, RJ. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Everlasting Bloom. Yeah, Max and the woman don't sing. It's funny that somebody else out there knows it. I was talking to my wife uh, the last couple days, and we were talking about watching uh, uh, Sound of Music, obviously the original with Julie Andrews. And it's a beautiful, beautiful musical. And I'm not even one that's that artsy or that into musicals or that you know, what have you. But it's a really, really beautiful movie. And uh, again, it's set in Austria and in the mountains. And uh, just, uh, they did it really beautifully. Hello from Izzy. Hello, Rico. I'm sure you look equally handsome when you're haircut. And good morning, Midwest Mama. I'm confused about Midwest Mama. We have two Midwest Mama. We have a Midwest Mama product finds. And we have a Midwest mama. That's it. Are they the same people? Good morning, Sandy Shepherd. But I do now badly and love it. All right. Well, Scott, you and I sound like we're on the same uh, 
page as far as our singing. Let me have a little water. Did I say good morning, good morning, good morning to you? I'm not sure if I did. So when you're not sure, you make sure and you go, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy. Dang it, I forgot my watch. And uh, this is Coffee with Ken. It is uh, Thursday morning. It's a little after 8 o'clock. I know for sure, but I don't have my watch. I'm worried somebody's going to come out and throw the watch at me. And again, it's not a little, it's not an Apple watch. It's kind of a fancier watch, if you will. But I'm, st I'm out here on pavement on our patio. And if the watch, if I don't catch it, with my dexter all the dexterity in the world and it lands face down on this rock the fate of my watch might not <laughs> might not have much of a future but uh where was i where was i oh yeah no it's uh thursday morning it's 805 thank you because i'm coming at you from naperville illinois which is a town. I was riding my scooter yesterday and I rode by the Naperville sign and it said, welcome to Naperville, 149,682 or something like that was our population. I've been saying it was 145,000. So we're a town of about 150,000 people, about 35 miles west of Chicago. It's a beautiful town, wins a lot of awards. Place I've been blessed to live with, live in and since 2008. They got great, great schools, which is good because we got a lot of kids. Uh, so we just shoved them out the door, shoved them out the door, sent them on their way. Some were blissfully skipping off to school and some were kind of begrudgingly going to, uh, uh, get school. Good morning, Donna Johnson. Thank you, Passionate Rebellion, for noticing my radio voice. And good morning, Sandra Lynn. Some of the kids were skipping off to school. Strangely, strangely, I got three stepkids and... I, the one that is happiest to go off to school every morning would have been five years ago, the one that I would have thought would have been the least pleased to go off to school. And I would say has made the growth, if I may, if I may, hopefully they're not listening and their biological parents aren't listening because they might come and say, don't evaluate our children. Bah! But anyway, would have, I would have said has made the most growth and most change and most transformation and is least recognizable from where he was four or five years ago and I think is doing great and uh, is actively participating in, in uh, activities and as friends and even as a girlfriend and it just surprises me uh, uh, surprises me a little bit uh, yeah good morning Julie Flanagan Good morning, Trump 2024. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Big Easy. Good morning, Lori. Good nor morning, Steve. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. And anybody else that's joining. Katie, hello, Katie! I forgot where Katie's from. Katie's from San Antonio, Texas. I knew she was from down south somewhere. I wasn't totally sure where. Uh, good morning, Boston, Bev. And you forgot Jerry. Jerry, I didn't see you, Midwest Mama. I didn't see you. I was too busy focused on the other Midwest Mama because we've got two. That's how huge this show is. You know you've made it. You know you've arrived. You know you've succeeded. You know you're a huge success when you got two Midwest Mamas watching your show. When you got two Midwest Mamas watching your show, you know you've made it. For anybody wondering, if you ask a question and I, if you ask it twice and I don't answer it, it's because I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm ignoring you. Uh, so just if you ask it twice and I don't answer, it's because I'm ignoring you. Come, I do a lot. I do, and I got to get to the point of this show, the real purpose of this show. Sorry, I have an itch on my head. It's kind of nice when you have an itch on your head and you're bald. You can just scratch away and not worry about messing your hair. When I had long blow up flowing, <laughs> I think about me walking. I was talking about seventh, eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade in high school. We all had combs in the back of our pocket. Do kids still wear combs these days? Do kids still wear combs these days? <laughs> Do I, mean, I remember going like this 
sometimes I put water in my comb and go like this. It's weird because it feels so natural. And I don't think I could do it like this. I guess I can do it like this because I'm doing it like this. But I would do it like this. And both hands got to be very active. And that's the way I would do it because I used to do that all the time in the bathroom <laughs> when we had time between class. And even if we didn't, even if we didn't. But anyway, for those that have been watching a while, I'm coming at you. So user just asked where the coffee. When you got users busting your chops, <laughs> users, people whose name is user because they haven't been around on TikTok long enough to create their own name. Feathered and parted in the middle. Scott, I don't know who this Scott is. I don't know who this Scott is. Uh, but I think I like Scott. I think Scott must be a 55-year-old guy that went to the same uh, grade school that uh, I did and must have been my friend. I, didn't, I had an older brother named Scott. I, I mean, I knew a few Scots. There was a Scott Hoyt I went to school with. Uh, there might have been another Scott or two, but there weren't too many Scots. He's from Omaha, so the odds, the odds of uh, Scott and I uh, going, I guess Omaha wasn't that different from suburban. I wonder when Scott, Scott, how old are you? I'm 55. Sorry when I get too focused on any viewer, but I'm kind of curious. Scotty is probably a hottie. Katie, Katie says Scotty is hottie. He's 56. Wow, we almost had the same. Yeah, then we have probably similar experiences and similar times and similar age, although you're older. And as we all know, the key to being young is hang out with older people. <laughs> so I could hang out with Scott and feel I'm young. But anyway, for those who have been watching a while, you know this show isn't just about me talking. You know it's more than that. For those that have been watching a while, see, I you know what it's about, because look at my mug. It really says it all. It really says it all. What it's really about is sharing my love of coffee. This is just so fun. Although it splashes and I'm wearing a gray gray sweatpants that are very thin. And when they get water on them or coffee on them, they stain. And if they get the water or coffee in the wrong spot, it looks like something that it's not. And I was warned as I was heading out to do my show this morning that don't stand up. It's embarrassing. Your crotch is right in the middle of the camera. People can see. It's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. It's starting to drizzle on me. But just gently drizzle. And I've got a not large silver maple above me protecting me from some of the bigger drops. But we're going to see how long I can be out here. Uh, I don't mind getting a little wet again. My hair doesn't get messed. But I don't want to be in a downpour, although that might be funny. If I do get in a downpour, it might downpour. My downpour. It might be time to call it a quits. But we won't worry about that. We don't want to worry too far ahead or regret too far in the past. Because uh, that's just not good. But anyway, for those who have been watching a while, you know, you know, you know. It's a show. Good morning, Curly Fries. It's a show. It's not ice. Katie says the rain will bounce off my head. No, 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 it won't bounce off my head. Let me tell you, as a bald man, I don't use umbrellas. We've talked about that before because I'm not that worried about my hair. And I find the umbrella and the this and the that and the wind is almost more of a hassle than staying dry or staying, getting wet. So I just go out there and generally... I mean, sometimes I regret it. When it's coming down really hard, I don't like to get in my car or get in a building or get super soaking wet. Uh, so sometimes I do regret not having that umbrella. But anyway, uh, where was I? About to have my first sip of coffee, and I'm very excited, even though it's not my first sip. I've gone a little slower today because I've been super dad. I've been very involved. I've been feeding babies. I've been rushing kids off to school. <laughs> It's okay to call yourself super data. If you can't tune your own horn, whose horn, whose horn can you toot? But anyway, for those who don't watch a while, you know it's a show about me drinking coffee. And with that in mind, I got this nice hot cup of coffee in front of me. I'm excited to take my first sip. My only hope is that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. 
Just us. Oh. <laughs> I know you all want to know. I know you all want to know, and you're going to be surprised. Some may be disappointed. I think that I have one viewer out there. Oh, oh, he is out there. He is out there that's watching. RJ, you should know the inventory of coffees I have at home. And since you probably do know the inventory of coffees I have at home, I don't know why you're guessing Sumatra. Yes, the Sumatra might be my favorite coffee, non-flavored coffee. And I get it from Starbucks, and it's delicious, and it's earthy, and it's got a lot of flavors. But I've been drinking a lot of flavored coffee lately. Thank you so much for following the live creator, Scott. Sandy Shepard's got a little caramel creamer this morning. Well, that sounds so fun. Good. Cheers, Julie. Uh, it's the morning, Joe. It is the morning, Joe. It sounds like Phil Hartman. Well, okay. Good morning. Glad to be here, guy. What kind of coffee? It is the morning, Joe. Good morning, Annette. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you all so much for joining. It's the morning, Joe. Tara, I'm shocked, too. And I'll tell you what, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Here's the reason. I've got pumpkin spice. I've got uh, uh, coconut. i got hazelnut in there. And we've been rotating those three. And it, we've been rotating those three so rapidly, drinking so much coffee, my taste buds were going away. And at some time in life, you got to strip down life to the bare bones minimum so you understand what coffee tastes like. And I was starting to lose what coffee tasted like. So this morning, on my second pot of coffee, I go, hey, let's make the morning Joe. Let's remind ourselves the beauty that, uh, that straight coffee is. And the Morning Joe's a dark roast, which is my favorite. It's from Starbucks. It was bought by a dear, dear friend. Oh, such a dear friend. Such a dear friend we've met once. But uh, no, a good man named RJ that watches my show. Many of you might know him. And uh, 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 sorry, I'm reading a comment. The breakfast at Taco Bell is great. Shannon, it's not boring to drink any. Uh, I drink any too, uh, but I do have my preferences. <laughs> when you do have a show that's called Coffee with Ken, if it was called Coffee with Shannon, I bet you'd have your favorites too. Uh, Everlasting Blue Mute. Uh, it's interesting. I didn't know what he said to get muted, but he likes to focus on my watch. Oh, but he liked the live. Uh, can we unmute people after they've been muted? I don't know. The is great and crunch wrap. Wow. 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 That's an interesting plug. I love Taco Bell, too, but I've never had the breakfast. I've never had the breakfast. I'll go to McDonald's. Uh, they still have their uh, couple things on their value menu that are real nice. Those little sausage burritos are good, and they also have a uh, sausage McMuffin that's pretty nice. How do I brew? I brew uh, simply as possible. I talked about it yesterday. Somebody bought me a French press or French roaster. French press, I think it's called. I think it's stored in a cabinet somewhere. But what I, uh, uh, I just do a uh, uh, Mr. Coffee. And honestly, uh, I have a fancier Mr. Coffee than I normally would have. Somebody laid out some serious coinage for this Mr. Coffee. And it wasn't me. Because if it was up to me, I'd buy the $21 at Super Target. Uh, just plain one button uh, uh, Mr. Coffee that I use most of my life. Uh, I heard Wendy's is good for breakfast. Sandra Lynn says every fast food place. You bring up Wendy's to me and I think a uh, carpet on the floor. And that's a struggle for me. Uh, Ick the Barber says French press and Keurig are the ways I like coffee. Well, I get that. I get that. I get that. But when you consume as much coffee as I do, I was separated from my second wife uh, about two years ago and uh, was living in a buddy's basement. And he had, uh, uh, his family were kind enough to take me in when I had nowhere else to go. I was living in their basement and they had a real nice basement. They had a little kitchenette and a bathroom and a shower. And one of those fancy little beds that comes out from the wall. I mean, it's not that fancy. 
And given I was there for like six months, which was very kind of them, uh, the bed wasn't as fancy, and I longed for a real mattress. But anyway, it's nice because it folds up and goes into the wall when you're not using it. My point is, in the kitchenette, they had a uh, Keurig. <laughs> they had a Keurig. And uh, uh, I drink a lot of coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. And I was going to Aldi because that's the cheapest place to buy groceries these days and buying, I don't know, they're 12 packs. But they were still probably six bucks or something, maybe. Something like that. And that's 50 cents for each cup of coffee. And that's kind of expensive when you consume as much as I do. But the real problem wasn't the price. It was moderately a problem, the price. The real problem was the volume of of little those little carrot cups I would have on the counter. And uh, my buddy's wife, uh, who's a friend of mine as well, uh, is into the environment, as am I. And I don't want to waste things or pollute the environment and make the island of plastic that I don't even believe exists that supposedly used to be floating around the Pacific Ocean that they don't talk any about anymore because of COVID. Uh, I didn't want to make that island of plastic any bigger. Hello, Jack. Uh, uh, and when you drink the amount of coffee I do and you're using the Keurig, you know, I might drink eight cups of coffee a day at home. And I don't want to worry about polluting the environment. I don't want to worry about the expense. I consider coffee kind of like air and kind of like water. That it's so cheap when you buy a bag for six, seven bucks and it can make, I don't know, 10 pots of coffee each serving 12 cups. That's 120 cups of coffee for six bucks. You know, what is that? A nickel? Something, or two cents? I don't know. Somebody do the math. Five cents a cup? Something like that. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but my math's usually on, but I'm throwing around so many numbers I got confused. Oh, hey, thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate you joining me today and the uh, kind words. Uh, fighting trolls is made of plastic. <laughs> Reminds me of the $6 million man. I don't know if it was the $6 million man, but I used to have a $6 million man. And one of the dolls, and maybe it was the G.I. Joe, the G.I. Joe that had the Kung Fu grip. Scott, you probably know out there, you're my age. Do you remember the, there was a little plastic doll and it had a Kung Fu grip. And I think you'd push the button on and it, the back, he had like a button on his back. <laughs> and you push it and his arm went up. I think it was G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Hello, Miss Joan. We have a wonderful audience today. We have a wonderful audience today. 49 viewers, that feels good. Makes me feel uh, good. I got to watch the ultrasound of my grandson. Six more weeks to go. Well, congratulations, Sandy Shepard, on soon to be... It was G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip. That's right. It's strange that G.I. Joe would have a Kung Fu grip. I don't know. Did G.I. Joe know Kung Fu? Tractase is munching on an apple. Uh, Elmo or Miss Rachel? Are you asking me which do I prefer, Elmo or Miss Rachel? I prefer Elmo. I prefer Elmo. Uh, I uh, was a fan of Sesame Street as a kid. I was born in 1968. I believe Sesame Street originally aired in 1969, and it's still going strong uh, 55, 54 years later. And although I didn't love Elmo, to be honest, uh, when he first came out, I felt Grover kind of got the shaft, and I feel Ernie and Bert don't get the starring role they deserve. And some of the characters are different, and they've introduced a whole bunch of other characters. The feeling that is Sel or excuse me, Sesame Street is still very real to the feeling uh, that I watched as a kid. And some things have changed, and I watched a real old one where Mr. Rogers came on uh, Sesame Street the other day, and it must have been, you know, made in the 70s. And Mr. Rogers was talking to Big Bird, and Big Bird went into the diner. But it was so weird, because the diner, they still have a restaurant on today's Sesame Street, but it's different looking, it's cleaner, it's plastic. The diner they went into looked like one of these old-fashioned bars and it looked like a real diner versus the movie set, the clean movie set uh, that they're using today. Uh, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was meeting Ken. 
Midwest Mama, also a.k.a. Jerry, uh, asked how it was meeting Ken. <laughs> that always feels funny to me. It always feels funny. And most people say I'm like I am. And I think I am like I am. Uh, hopefully I am who I am. <laughs> That's it. Cookie Monster song. Bert and Ernie should have come out and got married. Scott, I don't know. I don't know that Bert and Ernie, I think they were just friends. I think they were just friends. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, I don't think, just my personal opinion. However, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with you, <laughs> with what you're saying about Bert and Ernie. I'm going to go to 7-Eleven for perfume. Anyone need anything? Uh, fighting trolls, if they sell almond milk, we're running a little low on almond milk. And I could use a Gatorade. I don't have much Gatorade anymore. Hello, Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you for joining me this morning. Lisa Goodrow joined. Is she related to Lisa Kudrow from Friends? I believe that was Phoebe's real name. It's weird how quickly time flies. You watch back and you watch Friends and Joey Tribbiani had brown hair and now he's got silver hair or white hair or what have you. And Matthew Perry doesn't look the same. And Jennifer Aniston's still hot and she was hot then. Uh, I was thinking about David Schwimmer and uh, uh, Courtney Cox. It's weird I can name all the real names from those characters. And again, that was a time when... Uh, I used to watch a lot of TV. Ross looks the same, yeah. I uh, used to watch a lot of TV and uh, used to watch Seinfeld and Friends and what have you. Jennifer Aniston is not looking great anymore. Well, Everlasting Bloom, let's not pick on a woman that's probably in her mid-50s. Uh, you know, it's not always this easy to look awesome in your mid-50s. Can you make a post to some old Ken pictures from the 90s and zeros? I think if you saw the Ken pictures from the 90s, you'd almost be disappointed because the pictures from the uh, 90s and zeros don't look too, too, too different than I do today. But if I brought some college or 80s pictures, yeah, college pictures out uh, with me with flowing blonde hair, you might be surprised. Uh, I would say I look somewhat similar, probably had a wrinkle or two and certainly a pound or two. Uh, saying Jennifer Aniston doesn't look good anymore is delusional, says Greg Pitt. I don't know. Uh, when year? What year did I shave my head? Uh, I would say probably '96. There was a guy I used to work with, and again, it was rare uh, for white men. I'll just say it. Uh, shave their heads at this time. Michael Jordan had already made it fairly cool and a lot of black guys were uh, shaving their head in the late 80s, early 90s, but it was rare for, uh, but there was a guy named Don uh, Ivanovic who was Serbian and who would shave his head. And I used to sit there and go shorter and shorter as my hair was getting thinner and thinner and uh, it wasn't a good look. And one day I shaved it. And honestly, I felt Don and I were at a party together and we go to bars together. We used to drink a lot at those times. It's what you did back in the 90s when you were stockbrokers. Uh, a slideshow photos would make great TikTok over the year. Huh. Interesting. Going to get hair implants in Turkey. A lot of people do it on TikTok. I don't know what you mean, Donkey Kong, forever. Um... But anyway, we'd go out to a bar together or a party together, and it was rare to see bald white men. And we'd be standing next to each other, and I'd feel stupid, like we look like a couple uh, cue balls. <laughs> Did the girls swarm that first night shaving? Oh, well, RJ. <laughs> I, liked, I liked to have faux super cockiness. And I think... I think... My self-deprecating humor. I think you'd have to be fairly cocky to do the self-deprecating humor in a cocky way that I do. <laughs> and I wanted to say something. Because <laughs> RJ asked if the women swarmed the first night I shaved my head. <laughs> and I, I think it might be a line from Tangled when he said, well, I've never had a problem with the ladies. And I, I wanted to say that. 
but I had a problem saying that with a straight face. So, no, the women didn't swarm the first night I shaved my head. I went out and saw a Star Trek show. I might have had a girlfriend at the time, and she might have been okay because it wasn't as drastic of a change as one might think. I think I was shaving it with like no blade. But I will tell you what, when you are using one of the hair clippers, the one of the, that's my hair clipper sound. Uh, when you're using that and suddenly you go to a blade, it's a vast difference using a blade to going, a, you know, a shaver. Uh, it's much cleaner. It's a totally different feel. And although my, to the average person seeing me on the street, when I was using a blade, they probably thought I looked bald. Oh boy, did I really, did I really look bald when I shaved my head for the first time and it was a big adjustment for me. Karen Koopman, thank you so much for joining and thank you all for joining. I don't know how long I'm going to talk for you or how much I have to talk about this morning. I like to keep the show about half an hour. I'm falling further and further and further behind in editing videos. Ah. Uh, I uh, ate in, ate in, that's, <laughs> I dug into a video that I did like three weeks ago that was live, and uh, it was about an hour long, and I'll tell you what, out of an hour long live video, I can make 10 to 15 uh, little mini shorts and TikToks and, and what have you that I post on other social media platforms, and I have about 15 little clips of videos that are waiting to become final products that get unleashed on YouTube and unleashed on Instagram and unleashed on Facebook and unleashed on TikTok as little baby TikToks, reels, and shorts. And uh, that I got to still do to clean out the basement, if you will, so I can go back and edit more. Did uh, Shannon leave in? Shannon, have an awesome, awesome day. Cheers to you, Shannon. What did I choose for lunch yesterday? I chose, what did I, what did you chose for lunch? You confused me. I chose a burrito, extra crispy, uh, with steak and chorizo and uh, sour cream, and it was delicious. As I talked about yesterday, I think the burrito joints are unabashedly doing a little shrinkflation as well. They're raising the prices, and they're shrinking the burritos. No rice, no beans, no need. Uh, but I did have a side of chips and uh, plenty of sauces. So it was nice. The waitress... And now they're kind of using waitresses at these little burrito joints. And it's hard because sometimes I don't bring cash. Usually I don't bring cash. And yesterday I tipped when I paid. You know, you you give them a credit card, they slide the credit card, you get a receipt, and it says bill was, I think, nine seventy four, and then spot for a tip, and I added a tip. And I don't know if that goes to the waitress or it goes to the cooks. And then I sat down and I had no cash. And the waitress comes out and brings me some chips and brings me... She actually brought me four sauces. I think she might have been sweet on me. Probably not, but she. I think she probably brings four sauces to everybody. Three in bottles, two green, one really hot green, one not so hot green, a red that was really hot, and then she brought out the uh, a bowl full of salsa that was uh, not that hot at all, but it was pretty tasty. Guac, RJ. No, I did not get the guac. Uh, they are all sweet on me, Everlasting Bloom. Again, I've never had a problem with the ladies. Uh, <laughs> love saying that. Uh, uh, no, I only get guac. Guac is a must. Tara Jacobs. <laughs> guac is not a must. It's not a must. It's not a must. I love guac. I love avocado. But I only get guac when I'm feeling flush. When I'm feeling flush. And if you start ordering sour cream and guac and whatever else you might get on your burrito, oh, I got to go back to getting cilantro because cilantro they'll throw in for free and it's a nice little flavor in your burrito. But if you start ordering guac, because that can be an extra two fifty, and your nine dollar and seventy four cent burrito with sour cream, uh, and you add a tip and then you add guac on it, you know, it can suddenly be a fourteen dollar adventure. And that for me might be the difference between coming home and microwaving a burrito and actually dining out and getting a nice one. Some people say, Tara's sticking by it. That's the faux cockiness. Anytime you can use a French word that's almost a regular part of the English language, like faux, 
you should do it. I can't think of another one. I can't think of another one. Cilantro doesn't taste like dish soap. Cilantro to me is a really nice herb that almost brings the same big flavor of like an onion without the yucky breath that comes with the uh, onion. What's my favorite word? I don't know, it's really hard to pick one. I thought of about 10. I don't know if I'm being quick. I don't know if I'm being cryptic. Coffee, word of the day with Ken. Word of the day with Ken. Oh, we've uh, we've really enhanced the typical coffee with Ken. I so appreciate that. This is so much fun. I'm going to uh, sign off here pretty quickly. But it's so much fun because I'm going live at every day, uh, at every day. I'm going live every day at 8 o'clock. And I think that makes the... Uh, uh, works for the viewer, and it certainly works for me. It gives me a chance to get the kids off to school, love on my babies, uh, do a little work, strut around the house. <laughs> Did anyone watch Saturday Night Fever last night? That's me, strutting. I did not watch Saturday Night Fever last night. It was a hectic day. It was a hectic night. I went to bed early, and it felt good. There was plans of watching TV and or watching a movie in bed, but it didn't happen. All we did was really focus on that sleep. Keep giving us more coffee with Ken. Tara Jacobs, are you... Let me update Tara Jacobs on my schedule. I do my coffee with Ken at 8 o'clock. And this is for anybody. It's not just Tara. She might already know. I've recently, I think as of yesterday, <laughs> added a Reflections of the Day at 4.30 on YouTube. I did it at least yesterday. I've done it the last few days. And again, I'm trying to build up my audience on various social media platforms. I was talking to my key grip the other uh, a couple weeks, two, three, four weeks ago, and started playing a game of let's pretend. And the first let's pretend was, let's pretend I don't work at Super Target anymore. What would we do? And we kicked it around and somebody, she or I said, maybe go live more, maybe post more videos, maybe expand our audience on YouTube or our presence on YouTube. So <laughs> let's pretend became real. And a week, almost two weeks ago, I left uh, my job at Super Target. It was fun. <laughs> it was exciting. Maybe we'll share that story sometime. Uh, will a live reflection always be at the same time every day? At least for now, it'll be at 4.30 every day. Uh, it'll be at 4.30 every day, uh, just because, I don't know, I had to pick a time. It's kind of early in my mind to do uh, a Reflections of the Day. We need a Day in the Life video. It's posted on 8 p.m. each day as a recap of my day. Hi, Ohio Lindsay. What are you up to today? Up to today is drinking a lot of coffee. And Ohio Lindsay, if you're asking uh, for a professional what am I up to, you know, I haven't decided exactly how many streams of income I'm going to need to keep plowing forward. And right now I've got a few, and I'm keeping kind of quiet about a couple of them. But what I'm really trying to do is expand my audience on social media and grow uh, this. Grow Coffee with Ken, grow Thoughts from the Gym, uh, grow Reflections of the Day. Because um, for me, it's like therapy. And if you guys enjoy it, and somehow, some way, I can figure out how to make money out of doing something I love, uh, I'm going to feel really, really, really good. And uh, hopefully it helps other people because I talk about sobriety or mental health or divorce or relationships or coffee or Marky Mark. <laughs> I posted a video this morning uh, called Marky Mark. And I think it's a funny video. And what do they call it when you at somebody on TikTok? Like if some, somebody's at Coffee with Ken before and therefore I get notification uh, that uh, somebody did a video about me and I added whatever it's called, tagged them. I tagged them. Uh, I tagged Marky Mark in the video. I'm a little embar embarrassed because I have a man crush on Marky Mark. I think he's really he, you know his movies are funny he's good looking he's strong he's whatever uh he sings he dances he's talented uh and i did a video about him <laughs> and i played the good vibrations song in the background 
And I would think that if I'm Marky Mark, although it was his real introduction to the world in terms of his fame, that he's probably heard that song more than enough. I think he's probably heard that song more than enough. And probably Marky Mark's not going to watch my video. I hope he does. <laughs> but if I, I mean, I don't know. I, feel, I felt somewhat embarrassed or almost cheap because the video is funny on its own. And to use the Good Vibration song in the background, uh, I think he might knock on my door someday and kick my ass. <laughs> he's got big muscles. And he'd have to punch up because I'm six foot two and he's five foot eight. But again, he would probably have no problem punching up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love him so much. I'd appreciate I'd appreciate the blows, no matter how much the hurt would do. Thank you, Mark. Can you give me another one? <laughs> but uh, anyway, I was talking about it this morning. I don't know if you guys have seen the. Uh, uh, movie is it Daddy's Home? Daddy's Home with uh, Will Ferrell and Marky Mark, but there's a scene in it. Uh, there's a lot of scenes with Marky Mark doing his shirt off, and he's kind of Will Ferrell's nemesis, but they kind of form a bond. Really funny movie, and uh, there's a scene in where Marky Mark's doing one arm pull ups, and I don't know if that's true. I don't think I don't know. Can people really do one arm pull ups? If they can, that's not fair. But anyway, there's a scene in it where Marky Mark's doing one-arm pull-ups. And my image of Marky Mark, sorry, Mark Wahlberg, in case he starts watching my live videos, uh, was his him coming over, me being all excited like a little girl with a crush. It's Marky Mark, it's Mark Wahlberg. And him doing pull-ups and like punching me in the face while he's doing one-arm pull-ups and beating me to a pulp with the other fist. That's how cool and how badass Mark Wahlberg is probably be singing a song and maybe dancing while he's doing it and me go Psh. thank you sir can i have another Psh. thank you sir can i have another because i have such a man crush on mark Wahlberg. have i gone to his burger joint no i have not he is jacked he's ridiculously strong but i'll tell you what and i did the video yesterday if he was six foot two would he would he be too cool to handle and he might be but his muscles probably wouldn't look as big and I'll bet you for a guy like him, his muscles are almost too big for, you know, he's almost, I wouldn't want to be that thick. I wouldn't want to be that thick. I, maybe, you know, same biceps and same chest and all, but on a taller frame, I think would look perfect. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not gay, but I'm comfortable enough with my own sexuality that I can analyze a male physique. I know he has a house in St. Charles. I think his brother has a house in St. Charles. I think Mark Wahlberg currently lives in Vegas. And uh, Everlasting Bloom asked, am I sure? No, I'm not sure that he has a house in St. Charles. Uh, kind of disappointed every time, but I won't hold it against him. No, he's too cool. Don't hold anything against him. I mean, there's things you could probably hold against him, but I think he's apologized for and we should uh, let life move on. Uh, Ken knows all the deets. Do I like spicy pickles? Sure. I mean, I like pickles. I like pickles. I like spicy pickles. I like dill pickles. Sometimes you'll go to like, uh, what's the sandwich shop uh, that has these huge pickles in a jar? Sometimes I think pickles can be too big. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, but can be too big. And I don't know if I really, <laughs> sorry, I have a decent-sized female audience. I might alienate them with my lewd comments from time to time, but I can't help it. They, it comes out, and I can't pull it back because it's on live video. Thank you, Julie Flanagan. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I don't know that I really want to pickle this big. What about Chris Hemsworth? Do you like him, Star? I can see. He's one of those dudes that's unfairly good-looking with big muscles. It's not fair. See, Marky Mark, I wouldn't say, and again, his real name's Mark Wahlberg, but I call him Marky Mark, isn't too good looking. You know what I mean? I consider Chris Helmsworth too good looking, Brad Pitt too good looking, you know, those guys. But Marky Mark's kind of got a regular guy face, but it fits his whole thing. When they're whole and huge. Yeah, Ohio Lindsay understands. Tall and muscle. How tall is Chris Helmsworth? 
Uh, Chris, Captain Kenny, we always appreciate you joining. And I'll tell you what I have on my calendar. Yeah, The Rock is tall, good look. I mean, but he's not too good looking. The Rock, I don't even know if he's particularly good looking. He's kind of normal looking, but he's funny. He's charming. He's a good actor. He's got big muscles. I get why women like him. Uh, oh, Captain Kenny, I am excited about November 19th. Because I got it on my calendar. You know I'm going to be belting out happy birthday on that day. Uh, and I also have October 11th on my calendar. I've got November 1st on my calendar. I'm charting out birthdays uh, for you all. Because you know I love singing happy birthday. You know I love singing happy birthday. And Captain Kenny hopped on last November 19th. And uh, said, hey, it's my birthday. It's my birthday and my name's Ken. I used to not like your show. He didn't. He didn't. Now he's one of my biggest fans. Now he's one of my biggest fans. And uh, But he didn't like me at first. Costanza. <laughs> I don't know if anyone gets that reference. I often refer to Seinfeld. And... Uh, <sighs> George says a lot of people don't like him at first, but he kind of grows on him. And he was dating a woman. And he always dates pretty attractive women. For a really short, bald man with glasses, George did pretty well with the ladies. Uh, are you doing Movember? Growing a mustache for men's health awareness. No, I'm not, Ohio, Lindsay. Not even a thought in the mind. Thank you for asking. I'm glad RJ's doing it. I don't like mustaches at all. Um, we've talked about it. Yeah, Tom Selleck looked pretty cool with a mustache. But I ain't Tom Selleck. I ain't Tom Selleck. I'm coffee with Ken. But George always messes it up eventually. Well, yeah, yeah, he does. He does, Blanco. He's a clean-cut fella. I don't know who you mean. Tom Selleck? Perhaps. But I'm not a fan of mustaches. I don't think they look great on guys outside of Tom Selleck. I think he's six foot four. He might have played basketball uh, in college, I believe. I am a clean cut fella, Forever Fit. Hey, Forever Fit, I've been doing cardio the last two times at the gym. Uh, let me tell you, my legs really felt it on the advice of RJ. I, and in a desire to take the impact and hurt the damage on my knee to a minimum, but yet grow the muscles around the knee, hopefully strengthen it. Uh, I have done a incline on the treadmill and just walked. And I'm going at three and a half miles an hour for those that care. And yesterday I did five minutes at five degrees and then 10 minutes at uh, 10 degrees. And my legs can feel it. My legs can feel it and it feels good. And I'm going to take off today and I'm going to go back in the gym tomorrow and I'm going to maybe add a minute or add a degree or maybe just do it the same till I... Uh, 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 you know, build up some endurance. And yeah, no, I mean, I walk every day. I've got a dog, Holly. You guys probably know her. I take her on long walks. I'm active. I move around a lot. I move around a lot. I push my stroller a lot. Sometimes I'll be going out, hey, I'm going to go walk Holly. And my key grip will yell, hey, can you take one of the babies? And I love pushing a stroller. I love being a dad, pushing a stroller, walking my dog. But sometimes I know Holly just needs to go poop really bad, and I feel bad for her. And I just want to take a quick spin. And uh, usually I'll bring along one of the babies because the babies are little angels, and they just like looking around and looking at things, and I'm pushing the stroller, <laughs> trying to manage Holly, trying to pick up poops. It's a little tough because you pick – Holly's been pooping a lot the last few days. And you pick up the plastic bags and – you know, if I'm just walking or not pushing a stroller, I'll just carry along the plastic bag with poop in it. But I feel somewhat uncomfortable throwing the poop bag underneath the stroller for a couple reasons. A, we use that stroller to push things to the pool and might put drinks or food or towels in there. And yes, the bag is wrapped up tight. But still, having poop in that much proximity to where I might put a towel kind of bugs me. And uh, secondly... Uh, I also worry sometimes that the poop might waft up on my little babies. Add canned pumpkin to her food. It will help her. Do I flush it down the toilet? Well, RJ, no, I do not. I throw it in the garbage. I throw it in the garbage. <laughs> 
can I, can I end my show on poop talk? I think that I can. I will be going live today at uh, 4.30 on YouTube. And for anybody that doesn't follow me there, I'd uh, encourage you to follow me over on YouTube and join me there at 4.30 today. No, I'm not going to go live here uh, on YouTube. I've been doing that the last couple days, but it's just kind of for fun. I have a lot of things I want to get done today. Uh, Augie has a play date. Uh, for those that don't know, Augie has Down syndrome. And he's my two-and-a-half-year-old little nugget of love. He's napping right now. Uh, I bring up his Down syndrome. It's so interesting having a child with Down syndrome. Uh, and it's been life-changing for me, and it's probably life-changing for anybody uh, that does. Uh, but he, Illinois is really good in terms of providing assistance. And I, I talk a lot about uh, smaller government, and I tend to be for smaller government. I'll make no secret about that. I stick by it. But Illinois, if they're going to tax me and provide services for the people of Illinois, I'm going to use it. And Illinois is very good at helping parents of kids with Down syndrome uh, get their little babies prepared for life uh, as they grow. And they send out physical therapists and occupational therapists and uh, speech therapists every uh, week. Uh, and uh, his mama does a great job at organizing it and setting it up and cleaning the house and getting uh, everything ready for them. And they come to our house and uh, uh, just do a great job. Uh, but one of his therapists today uh, has organized a little play date. Uh, she sees another uh, baby with Down syndrome that's about Augie's age. And I believe the baby and the mother are coming over to our house today and uh, uh, gonna have a little play date uh, with Augie, and we're gonna get to meet another little Aug or not a little Augie, a little uh, child that has Down syndrome. And uh, it's always, I don't know, as a dad of a Down syndrome son, I, my heart always jumps if I see a person or a baby with Down syndrome, because I almost wanna give them a hug. And because uh, I think there's probably, I know for me, the special bond I feel uh, just haven't gone through the experience and gone through the feelings and the, the fear and the love uh, of the whole experience uh, and to have a little baby coming over with Down syndrome and seeing them play. I mean, maybe they won't get along. Augie's a little bit of a bully. He's a little bit of a bully. I always call him my perfect little nugget of love. <laughs> he throws tantrums. He throws things. He wrestles his little sister. And... Uh, uh, looking forward to it. So anyway, I'm not going to go live on YouTube at uh, uh, right now because I want to get inside, have some breakfast, and get my day started. And uh, uh, looking forward to that. But I will be going live on YouTube at 4.30 today. Uh, probably, unless something weird changes, I'm not going to the gym, so I'm not going to do thoughts from the gym. But again, I'm having fun with this. And I so appreciate you guys hopping on and uh, adding the conversation and keeping it going and keeping it fun and drinking some coffee and sharing a little bit of your morning with me. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you had a wonderful night's sleep. Hope you're excited about your Thursday. You're enjoying your coffee. <laughs> Sorry. I hope I don't lose an audience. <laughs> the coffee was cold. It wasn't even tepid. It was cold. But I so appreciate uh, you guys for joining. Thanks, Julie. Uh, so appreciate you guys for joining. And we're taking it day by day, Julie. Uh, I'm just doing the best we can and things are going well, just to let you know. Uh, but I so appreciate you guys for joining. I hope you're uh, feeling good. I hope you are uh, loving yourself. I hope you are forgiving yourself. Uh, and as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Uh-huh.